gather up your block. You're going to keep the right side facing the wall and step the feet wider. So if you only have one mat, then turn your mat so that the long edge is against the wall. Check where your legs are going to be, where your feet are going to be. So you're taking a wider stance, bringing your left heel behind you, the inner edge of your left heel, towards the wall. And yet, having your right foot a little bit of a distance from the wall so that your right foot aligns with your left arch, just like when you would do triangle pose away from the wall. You can always adjust the distance between your feet. Find what will work for you to start with. Take the outer edge of your left foot, your back foot, either parallel to the back edge of the mat or at a slight angle so your heel is slightly behind your toes. See what works better for your knee joint. The block is going to be in front of your right foot, your right toes, about a block's length from your toes. Once you're all set up in your foundation, press the floor away with the outer edge of your left foot. And if you have any issues in your knees, lift your toes and both feet. Be mindful of not locking your right knee. And as you lengthen up through both legs, as much as works for your knee joints, lift up through your belly, lift your arms up parallel to the ground, and notice what touches the wall. You should feel your left heel, inner heel touching the wall, your right butt cheek, and possibly both shoulders, maybe your little fingers. Next time that you inhale, think of breathing from your feet up through your legs, up the length of your torso, and out through your arms as you exhale. Reach out over your right leg, come parallel to the floor like you're reaching out over a countertop. Pause there for a breath and find your length from your back foot. Press the outer edge of your left foot into the ground, push the ground away, lengthen up through both legs and through both waists. And as you exhale, see if there's any more reach through your right fingers coming out parallel. That doesn't overstretch your inner right thigh. Next time that you exhale, keep everything that you have and just change your arms. Let your right hand come down inside your right leg. And as you do that, look to see that your right knee is opening more towards the wall than towards your hand. Lengthen up from your left foot through your left waist and see if there's any more opening up through that left arm that doesn't bring your shoulder up around your neck. Use the wall for balance and to help you refine what's happening in your legs and in your waist and also in your pelvis. See if you can aim your tailbone towards your left heel. Feeling the opening of your left knee over your left toes and your left hip starting to open. So you might find a little bit more of that left butt cheek coming towards the wall. And then last breath or so, see if you can get a sense of the very top of your head stretching away from your left foot. This next time that you exhale, bend your right knee and bring your right palm to the top of the block. If you find as you transition here that your right foot feels too close to the wall, shift it out a little bit. And if you find that your left foot feels too far to transition your weight onto your right foot, then step it a little bit closer. As you push off with your left foot and take it up into the air, be conservative with how high you take it. Push the ground away with your right heel and lengthen up through your right leg. Find where your right knee doesn't lock, so you might need a little bend in it. It's very easy in this transition to drop your weight into your right hand, into the block, but see if you can push the ground away a little bit with your right hand instead of sinking into it. You may want to start with your left hand on your left hip so that you can feel the opening of that left hip. Just like you had in Trikonasana as you move into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon with the wall. 
Feel that that left hip is opening, but just to the extent that it doesn't pull the right knee out of line with the standing foot, with the right foot on the ground. Once you find where the foundation is in your right foot and knee, how much opening you can create in your left hip without pulling the right knee out. If you want, you can take your left arm up into the air. Use that left hand if it's up in the air to reach up to lift weight out of your right hand. See if you can start to open your left ribs and your left shoulder towards the wall a little bit more. Feel a long line between the two hands and also between your left toes and the top of your head. So notice if you've crowded your neck, clear that space. Feel one more inhale to lift and open. You have the wall there for support, so use that. And then as you exhale, grab a hold of the block and bring it up with you as you bend your right knee and push the ground away and come up to standing. With your feet wide, shift the block to the left hand, setting it about a block's length ahead of your left toes. We're going to set up on this side for Trikonasana, triangle pose, so taking the distance between your feet that you know will work for you. You can always reset it as you need. Turn your left toes to face off the short end of the mat so the midline of your foot is parallel to the wall. And bring your right heel next to the wall or a little distance from the wall and if possible behind your toes. Otherwise your foot is parallel to the short end of the mat. Press into the outer edge of your right foot and find where your inner arch lifts. Your right knee starts to align over your toes. Check that your left knee is opening towards the wall so that your inner left arch is lifted and you can see your big toe inside your kneecap on that left foot. Press the floor away with both feet. Feel free to lift your toes if that gives you more stability in your knees, more connection to the ground. Lengthen up through your legs up through your waist, and lift your arms up parallel to the floor. Let your shoulders stay broad. This next time that you exhale, lengthen out over your left leg, coming parallel to the floor like you're reaching out over a countertop. Feel how that stretches your inner left thigh. Pause here. Push the ground away with the ball of your left foot. Draw up through your left thigh muscle, your quadricep muscle, so your knee doesn't lock. Draw up through your waists. And see if there's any more you can edge out through your arms. This next time that you exhale, just change your arms. Release your left hand down inside your left thigh. Lengthen your right hand up towards the sky and feel the connection all along that right side. Press the outer edge of your right foot down. Let your knee open out over your right foot. Your right waist and ribs lengthen and yet keep your right shoulder up on your back. Notice what connects to the wall. Use your core strength. Imagine radiating out from your core through your legs up through your spine, out through your arms, and right out through the top of your head. So draw your low belly in and up. Aim your tailbone towards your right heel. The next time that you exhale, bend your left knee. Bring your left hand forward to the block. Find the height of the block that will work for you. Push off with your right foot. You might need to step it closer first so that you can feel your weight coming into your left foot without sinking into your left hand. As you start to lift your right leg up into the air, energize through that right foot. Press through the ball of the foot. Use the leg muscles to hold the leg up instead of relying fully on the wall or the left leg to hold the right leg up. You can keep your right hand on your right hip as long as you need to feel what's happening in that right hip as you start to open the right butt cheek towards the wall. Notice how that action tends to pull your left knee away from the wall. So really strong left thigh muscle to lift the kneecap up. 
It's also really easy here to sink into your left foot, your left knee, your left hip, and into your left hand. So use the ground and the wall to push away from them, to lift up out of them. If you do take your right hand up, lift your right fingers away from your left fingers. Start to open your right ribs and shoulder towards the wall. Stretch the top of your head away from your left foot. Give that one more breath. And then use your next exhale to release by bending your left knee and bringing your right foot back down to the ground. Bring your feet closer together so they're underneath your front hips. We're going to do what's called wall doll, rag doll with the wall. You want to find first where your feet need to be, the distance they need to be from the wall so that when you release forward and all you have against the wall is your butt, that you're not going to do a forward roll into the room. So find where that is. How far do your feet need to be from the wall? And then bring yourself back up. Double check that your feet are parallel to each other. They might need to be a little wider if that feels better. Find where your low back is long. So bend your knees a little bit. Tuck your tail down. Use your core strength to pull your belly into your low back. And get some release in your low back through that action. See if you can feel both sides of your spine in your low back are pressed into the wall. And then feel that your shoulder blades are also against the wall. So you may have to actively roll your shoulders back. It may feel a little awkward initially. And see if you can feel any difference here with how your shoulder blades, your upper back, connect to the wall on either side of your spine. And then bring the back of your head against the wall. If you tend to forget about your feet or you have issues in your knees, lift your toes and think of pushing the ground away with the balls of your feet. That should also help create a little bit more connection of your low back to the wall. So keeping everything that you have, arms relaxed by your sides, the next time that you exhale, let just your head release forward so your chin drops down towards your chest. Notice when you keep your upper back against the wall and yet let the weight of your head go, what you feel in the back of your neck. And think of lifting your breath all the way up into the back of your neck. And this next time that you exhale, let the one or two vertebrae just below what you're feeling stretching in the back of your neck peel away from the wall. So it's as though the weight of your head is going to peel your spine away from the wall, keeping everything underneath connected to the wall so that you can articulate and focus the stretch in the upper back. Take as long as you need to feel that stretch and be sure that you can breathe into it, letting your arms continue to hang heavy. Very slowly, peeling your spine away from the wall. So you'll need a little bit of foot energy, a little bit of core energy to keep your low back connected to the wall until you get to it. Think of curling your upper body over your lower body. Letting the pull of gravity draw your upper body closer to the ground. Notice where you feel points of intensity. Feel free to give those areas an extra breath or so. Eventually, you'll get to the point where all that's next to the wall is your sacrum, and when you release forward, the underside of your butt. So to find a fuller release, change the angle of your pelvis so that you tilt your sits bones up and plant them against the wall. Keep your knees bent so this is more about your spine and the inversion for your spine than it is about stretching your legs. And you can either let your arms hang, or if you rather, you can hold opposite elbows and let your weight release over fully. Check that you're not holding your head, so you may need to nod or shake your head to release, to feel the weight of it dropping down. 
If any of this doesn't work for you to be upside down, you can have your arms on your thighs or come out of it. Be mindful of what works best for you. Give this one more breath here. And then release your hands to the ground if you're holding opposite elbows and bring your hips down behind your heels. If that's too tight a space to come down into this very narrow squat, then you might need to walk your feet farther forward. This is a a good preparation for high crow. So it's a much narrower squat than what we're used to doing with the feet towards the edges of the mat, wider or as wide as the hips, and angled outwards. With this, you're working with your feet parallel to each other and using your hands on the outer edges of your knees to help bring your knees in line with your feet. And see if you can play for a breath or so here to find that alignment of your knees over your feet and yet to press the outer edges of your feet down so you keep your inner arches lifted. Namaste.